can't wait to show you some more techniques with the I came, I saw, I contoured face charts. <laughs>
the uh, magnetic brushes and the blend in sponges. I'm adding a, a little bit of color just to areas that I want to deepen. So parts of the paper that I want to send back uh, so that, you know, under the tip of the nose, by the side of the nose, in the uh, Cupid's bow, I'll put a little bit under the bottom lip uh, and also on the neck um, at the sides of the face and just slowly build that up and leave the paper lighter where I want areas to protrude. So areas that I want to come forward like the top of the nose, uh, the front of the chin, the cheekbones, the brow bones. I can't say that I have a formula that I use every single time I create and part of the whole reasoning with the face charts is that you get to experiment but one fun way to work is to add that volume, uh, those contour colors, like I was talking about with bringing parts of the face forward, sending other parts of the face back into the paper, so you're building volume. So I like to get those sorts of colors down first, the actual skin tone, whether it's light, dark, or anywhere in between. And then I like to add the color. Uh, so I sort of treat that as a separate uh, issue and start to add color into the cheeks, into the eyes. I can add dramatic eyeshadow if I like. Um, I also like to add some shadow colors. Now you can use browns if you like or um, you know versions of skin tones. I like to add a little bit of color into my shadows. I just think it makes it look more interesting and more di more dimensional and that's why I have mauves and lilacs as such a feature in not just my palette pastels but in just about everything that I create because purples are just so interesting and purple because it's made from a warm and a cool color it's just got such gorgeous properties and very often, you don't. if you've got gorgeous purples in your artwork, you don't tend to notice and go, oh, look at all that purple. What purple does is helps other colors sing because it marries, warms, and cools together. It's got its own magical properties. If you really loved what it was that you were creating, you might want to add a little bit of fixative, a matte spray. Um, you can use cheap hairspray in a pinch. Um, just as long as it doesn't have any hair conditioners, oils, vitamins, anything added to it that might mark, that might mark your paper. But matte fixative is probably better. And that will just freeze things as they are. And then when you lift up your tracing paper, you've got that beautiful shape sitting there ready for you to create with. Uh, now I've got a little bit of excess around the uh, edges. So I'm just using my brush just to take that off. You could blow on it. The risk with using your lips to blow across it is you can, uh, you know, get a little bit of spit knife come flying out and that can mark your pastels. So sometimes it is better to use a brush or you can fan the paper. It's just, you just want to knock off any excess that you don't want there. I love adding all my little finishing touches with maybe some drama stick to add highlights in the eyes, add a few different colors uh, in the irises just to uh, give them more of a shimmering appeal. I hope that you're inspired to use the tracing paper in the back of your I came, I saw, I contoured face chart. And if you would like to share your artwork with me, just tag Jane Davenport when you upload on Instagram or you can join my Facebook group. That's where we share everything Jane Davenport in inspired. The link is in the description box below. Mm -hmm.